From 2016 to 2021, wildfires swept through huge sections of Woodland Caribou Park, taking advantage of a huge snowdown blowdown event from 2012 that felled many trees. In 2016, the southern end burned from the Manitoba border to the eastern edge, only sparing the Kilburn and Liano Lake areas. 2018 and 19 saw more central and northern areas scorched. After a few more active fire years, 55% of the park finally burned up in 2021, many areas for the second time in only a few years. Although fire is a natural and necessary ingredient of the boreal landscape, WCPP will not look the same in my lifetime as it did when we first crossed its borders in the early 2000s. After two years of COVID and a year of wildfires followed by a spring of flooding, we weren't sure what to expect from Woodland Caribou Provincial Park for our 2022 canoe trip. We planned accordingly, choosing a straightforward 80km route that would give plenty of time to put up with manky portages and other obstacles. Our route would take us from Liano Lake through Bunny, Lunch, Jake, Mexican Hat, Burnt Rock, Paul, Upper Kilburn, and back through Kilburn Lake to Liano. It was a nice easy route and very familiar to most of us. After making the long drive from my parents' house in southern Manitoba to Red Lake in pouring rain, we continued up Highway 618 and along the Suffol Erium Lake Road. Thankfully the rain stopped as we drove the unusually rough Suffol Lake Road to the Black Bear Lodge turnoff. Officially, the Erium Lake Road was closed at kilometer 20, but we managed to drive the bypass in our trucks with no issues. The Erium Lake Road continued on through the bush, but it sure looked different. This road used to be a narrow winding track through the boreal landscape. Due to the wildfires of 2021, the road now winds its way through a huge fire break and feels much less like a bush road than it used to. A huge storm was sending bolts of lightning straight down over the Liana Lake area as we drove towards it. As we exited the Red Lake Forestry District and entered the Packwash Forestry Management Zone, a sign warned us that we were continuing on an unmaintained road. Ironically, the road improved dramatically here, all the way to the mile 51 junction. Here we go. I wonder what that sign says, because it's still a Woodland Caribou sign. The mile 51 road was much wider than in the past, and the last five kilometers of the long drive ended in a buggy parking lot. One, two, three, four. Okay, I don't have to portage any of my ships. You guys have to do it all. <laughs> Our first day of paddling was short. Portaging from the parking lot to Liana Lake and traveling from there over the 300 meter Roots and Rocks route into Bunny Lake, where we set up camp on a nice island site. The storm had moved on and it was hot and muggy as we excitedly organized our gear for the next five days and set off down the 375 meter portage to Liana Lake. Yano Lake. Good to be back. Uh -huh. How's it going? Hey, how's the lake? It's beautiful. All right. It's been eight years since I've been here. I don't know about you. Eight years, I think, too, yeah. in the Yano? Yeah. Yeah. Good job, boys. The green beauty is loaded. Mm -hmm. We got a red beauty, a green beauty, and a black beauty, Rod. The last time we paddled the Anno was way back in 2014, eight years ago. I haven't been in WCPP since 2019, and it sure felt good to be back. Portage between Bunny and Liano. 300 meter, some elevation change. A little bit slippery with the rain, but nice. Campsite on one of these points. Just as we set up camp, the rain started again, soaking us pretty good before finally tapering off for the rest of the evening. Like we're 
so tippy, like it was full of water, <laughs> but we were still floating. That was Part the one. That was the one bail right, everything out. That was but. the one right after Batula. And then we shot something else and the, the yeah. canoe went right under the water. Yeah. We woke up to a warm and sunny morning, much different than the wet start we had on Monday. After a very leisurely breakfast and slowly packing up our still wet tents and tarps, we slowly paddled away from the island site towards the north end of Bunny Lake. On our second day in the park, we paddled and portaged a square horseshoe route from Bunny to East Lunch Lake that hasn't made its way into Paddle Planner yet. After completing the square, we went through the burnt up East Lunch and Lunch Lakes before setting up camp in Jake Lake in a rare stand of unburned trees. Most of the square horseshoe route from Bunny Lake is outside of Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. As Rod and I completed a 150 meter portage, we noticed low dark clouds racing towards us. Just as we started paddling again, lightning split the morning air right in front of us, sending us quickly back to the safety of land. It's surprising in the backcountry how quickly conditions change. One minute we were paddling without shirts, and the next we were shivering in cold rain. For the next hour or so, heavy rain soaked our little spot, but we made some warm lunch and bevies to help our bodies regulate. By the time the thunder once again became distance and the rain let up, we were more than ready to keep going. By the time we finally exited the last portage into East Lunch Lake, Chuck summarized the day so far with, This trip is a portaging trip with some canoeing in between. He wasn't entirely wrong, but this is the way WCPP trips are, especially when you're navigating the smaller lakes and waterways. Definitely rocks. Yeah. <laughs> this is kind of neat. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can get in. The East Lunch and Lunch Lake area was hit by the 85,000 plus hectare May 2016 Red 03 fire and it showed. As we started the 150 meter portage out of East Lunch, we were quickly introduced to what a six year old burn does to portage trails. It was kind of neat to do the Rock Flake Falls 200 meter portage out of Lunch Lake and remember it from a few previous trips including in 2014 when it looked much different before the burn. After completing the short 80 meter portage into Jake Lake, Rod and I paddled past a few candidate campsites to the northwest arm leading to Mexican Hat hoping to find for a nice island site. Alas, this wasn't to be, and we had to settle for what turned out to be a pretty good alternate at Site HQ. By some small miracle, this site was largely unaffected by the fires despite being surrounded on all sides.
Wednesday dawned clear and calm. Our route for today would take us northwest out of Jake Lake, also known as Landing Crane for its distinctive shape, towards Mexican Hat Lake. Despite having grander plans originally, we decided to take advantage of the walleye factory and stayed at Camp GV. Four of us took a few hours to paddle to the 800 meter portage between Mexican Hat and Burnt Rock Lake to prepare it for the following day. We took our time leaving camp, but by 10 o'clock we were tackling the set of portages out of Jake Lake toward Mexican Hat. This was always going to be one of the challenging sections of the trip. Each time we've been through here it's been more work than expected and today was no different. Oh yeah, I see the ribbons. Oh yeah, we do. That other Karen was marking the other way. It's not feeling right though. In order to make up for an early stop and make the following day more efficient, Rod, Harold, Dylan and I decided to ensure the viability of the long 750 meter portage out of Mexican Hat towards Burnt Rock Lake. The last time we took this portage was way back in 2009, and even pre-burn it was a bear. From about the midway point, the route became more challenging with burn and root finding difficulties. We marked the route as best we could and cut some fallen trees out of the way. The good news was that the route would go and we knew what to expect on Thursday morning. The rest of the day Wednesday was spent hammering walleye at the falls and relaxing at camp. I filleted nine walleye, becoming pretty efficient at it by the last one. Thursday was another very calm morning. We went further today, traveling from Mexican Hat over the 750 meter portage towards Burnt Rock Lake, and from there through the extreme southwest end of Jake Lake. After portaging into the northeast end of Paul Lake, we paddled through recent burns and found the elevated MT campsite on an island. Burnt Rock Lake lived up to its name. Most of its shoreline was blackened and apocalyptic. The north part of the lake was affected by the Red 010-2021 wildfires, while the southern end was charred in 2016 by the Red 003 fire. This is where I uh, took the canoe. Nice rod!
Paul Lake used to be one of the gems of WCPP. Even now, it was very scenic despite the burns, but nowhere near as lush as I remembered from years earlier. And then you do it so often, it's repetitive motion. And then one time I, you just lose it. And technical communication course, which is basically an English course. On Friday, we tackled the properly dubbed three teeth portage out of Paul Lake before continuing along the Sturgeon River into Upper Kilburn Lake. After lunching in Upper Kilburn, we navigated the one kilometer portage into Kilburn Lake before setting up our last camp of the trip on the excellent NT Island site. Well, this is the start of the day, I guess. There's that. Rod on vacation, doing what he enjoys. Muck. Yeah, I got another word that rhymes with muck. Duck. <laughs> Incorrect. less pleasant. Coming hot. After a lunch stop in Upper Kilburn Lake, we felt ready to tackle the longest portage of the trip, the 1,000 meters between Upper Kilburn and Kilburn Lake. We'd done this portage in 2014 and remembered it as long but uncomplicated. Thankfully, even with little maintenance over the past few years, the portage was still uncluttered, albeit bloody long in the heat of the day. Biting flies and mosquitoes didn't make carrying a canoe on my head for one kilometer any more pleasant, but we got it done. Like a walleye to me. What? Yeah, that's a walleye. 100%. It's huge. tiny house like with that fake asphalt brick uh, shingle. Our last day in Woodland Caribou was short and sweet. We paddled out of Kilburn Lake up Liano Creek and navigated the portages into Liano Lake. We finished up with a quick crossing of Liano before portaging back to the parking lot.
tiếp Despite being a rather short trip at only five days, WCPP 2022 was very enjoyable. It's always nice to paddle with the boys, especially with my younger brother Rod, whom I don't see very often with our busy lives several provinces apart. I'm really hoping that we don't wait another four years for the next group trip. Given the two new canoes that were purchased for this one, I am confident that another one will happen sooner than later. And I can't wait. <laughs> Can you put it on like a 36 degree angle, please? <laughs>